Hey, what's up? I'm Jason. And when I first started out with Unity, I really struggled with the difference between update and fixed update. I got confused. I made a lot of mistakes and I ran into a lot of bugs. So today I'm going to show you how to avoid those bugs, what some of those bugs were that I ran into and how I use update and fixed update now to make everything nice and smooth and just work cleanly. So here I've got a little example with a ball that bounces around. I can see I can jump and control it. Um, that's what we'll be using as our example. But before we dive into the code for all this stuff, we're gonna need to cover what update is and what fixed update is and what the differences are real quick. So the best explanation I found, or at least the simplest and most to the point one, was on this Stack Overflow post, which is also referencing a forum post. And it just says that update is run once per frame, which we all know because if you add a new Unity script, you see the update is called once per frame. But when you add a fixed update, you don't get a notification like that or any message, right? So you don't get this next little bit of information thrown in your face all the time, which is that fixed update can run zero, one, or several times per frame, depending on how many physics frames there are per second in the thing in the uh, settings and how fast or slow your game is running. So if your game is running really, really, really fast, you may have 10 updates for every fixed update call. It's running really slow. You may have three fixed updates for every update call. It all depends on your frame rate and your settings. So the reason for this is that our fixed update is there to control physics stuff. It's there for, or it's there to keep in sync with our physics system. So it's where we're supposed to do physics stuff. But what happens is people run into an issue where they want to read input and then they want to push some physics data. So they end up doing them all in either update, they read it all in update and set the physics data, or they read it in fixed update and set the physics data. And both of those have pitfalls. So let's take a look at what those pitfalls are. I'm gonna just pull up some commented code as an example. So here's our ideal situation. Say we're reading um, a jump in input and we're applying the force in input totally fine. Or if we're reading it in fixed update and we're applying it in fixed update, everything would be fine if we we're in this state where we have an update and a fixed update back to back every single time. But this is not real world. That's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. Don't rely on it happening because it won't and you're going to run into problems. Let's look at what some of those problems could be. So say we are just reading the input in fixed update because we're like, hey, we know that we have to do physics stuff in fixed update. So we're not gonna do it in update, you know better than that, right? So we'll just read the stuff in fixed update. What could go wrong? Here's what could go wrong. So say we got an update and a fixed update. Yeah, whatever, we'll ignore those, nothing happened. But then here on line 66 in this update, the player has pushed the jump button, whatever that is. It's the button on their controller or their mouse button or something. So get button down returns true. So if you call the input dot get button down, pass in fire one for that left click or left control, then that would return true. And so would get button because get button returns true as long as the button is down. But let's go to the next frame. We read the next update, get button down returns false because get button down returns true only for the frame where it's read or that one time. So now it's no longer true. And um, when we go into our fixed update and we try to read our get button down there, it's false and they don't jump. And they go, what the hell, our jump isn't working right. Okay, well then we'll just move it all to update. Nothing, nothing bad then, right? Well, that'll fix it, shouldn't be a problem. But we do the same thing. We go down here and we look at our moving and our update. Say we read the input in an update and then we move with the input. Then we read the input in another update and we move with the input. We've already moved two times in one physics frame and realistically we could end up moving five or 10 times. We can easily miss collisions and cause a lot of other problems with our physics system. So we don't wanna do either of these, but there is an easy solution and that's to just read the data in our update and handle the data in our fixed update. So let's take a look at what that actually would look like. Well, first let's go back over to the editor and see what this feels like one more time. So I come over here, I run around and go left and right. I can go up and down. And if I left click, I can jump. So that that's what our controls are. That's how everything works. And um, before actually, before we go to the code, 
I just wanted to, again, thank everybody who does share the videos and subscribes and hits the like button. If you don't mind doing that now, please just go hit share, hit like, subscribe, any of that stuff. It really does help, gets the word out, and then more people watch, more people learn, and everybody's code's better. So you're really just helping yourself by making your future coworkers better at code by sharing it all, right? Okay, let's jump into the code. I'll shut up now. Also, a special thanks to everybody on Patreon. I, I always just want to say thank you to those guys. Really awesome. I really do appreciate it. Now the code. So we have a single script in this project and it's just called a mover and it requires a rigid body because we're going to move a mover thing around. We're going to apply some force to a rigid body. We have two fields here, a move speed and a jump multiplier. You can see that Ryder is smart enough to know that I've actually set the value to 200. 10 is not the value that I'm using. 200 is the value. I love Ryder. It's a freaking awesome feature. Okay, then we've got a rigid body here that we are caching in our awake. So our awake just gets that rigid body component. We have a vector for our movement force and a Boolean for jump effect. Let's add those to their own lines. These are the important parts. This is what we're actually working with. In our update, which is called once per frame, we read the horizontal and the vertical values from our axis. So that's our WASD or our joystick or whatever we're using to move around. And then we set the movement force to those values, which set the movement to those so that next time I move in my fixed update, I'll be able to read this. I do the same with our jump. So I read to see if fire one was pressed and I check to see if I'm grounded here. We're just faking it. We're just saying, yes, we're always grounded. So I can jump while I'm in the air. It's fine. It doesn't matter. And that's just because the way that you would implement a grounding system would depend a lot on the type of game that you want. You know, you may want to be able to bounce off of walls. You may want to be right on the ground. You may do water-based stuff. Who knows? So I didn't want to implement that and confuse things. We, we just check to see if you're on the ground and we just lie and say that you are. But if you press fire one or jump or left click, we set the jump bool to true. That's it. So that's all of our update. Notice that our update is really just reading input. So what I should do here and what I should have done before this is hit select all of that, hit control shift R and hit extract method. And let's call this read input and make that a method because that's what I'm doing. I'm reading the input and I'm filling in my movement force and my jump value. Then in our fixed update, which is called every X milliseconds, which is adjustable in our project settings. And let's take a quick peek at that. So to get to that, you just go to the project settings, which is under um, edit and then project settings. I have mine docked right here. And then go to time and here you can see the fixed timestamp or time step, not timestamp, time step, which is the amount of time between each physics update. So here it's at 0 0.02. So that's what a 50th of a second, but, or you could write it as like, 20 milliseconds like that, you can tell. So that's what it is, and that's where we would adjust it if we wanted to. So that's how often it's called. And we have our move method and our jump method called. So our move gets called, adds force in the movement force amount, or the, yeah, the movement force vector, which is that the direction that we wanna go and the amount that we wanna go in that direction, and multiply that by a move speed. And then for our jump, this is important. We do it a little bit different. We check to see if jump is true. If it is, we add some force and then we want to set jump back to false because we want to reset that. Our movement force gets reset all the time in our update when we're reading it. Our jump does not. We don't want to clear out our jump. So we want to make sure that we reset that after we've processed the jump. So just to recap one more time, when we're doing stuff with movement or physics or just moving objects around, I guess, you want to generally read your inputs in your update and then move things around in fixed update. You should be able to get a nice smooth movement. And if you don't check grounding, you can uh, jump while you're in the air and kind of float around like a weird ball. Also, um, just real quickly, I want to mention that grabbing the assets for this project was awesome. I actually just used the built-in project view down here. Um, let me just show it because I thought this was really cool. I used the project view and went searching for like ball found things that I wanted by clicking on asset store and just kind of dug around, grabbed a pack and imported it and it was awesome. Really worked out great for just getting everything in here really quickly for prototyping. So if you haven't tried that feature out, I highly recommend it. I'm in a 2019.3 a beta right now and it, it works great. It's really cool. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Again, if you like this kind of stuff, please share it first, um, then like and subscribe after and then go up posters about it and stuff 
Um, but anyway, thanks again. Really appreciate everybody. And uh, if you have special requests or other things you want covered, just drop them in the comments below. I'll try to catch them all. I miss a lot of them because there's so many, but I'm going to try to get as many of them as I can. All right. Thanks again. Bye.